I hope it's not inappropriate for me to introduce a somber note. You know, in show business, you don't always want to follow the saddest, bravest stories. But this isn't show business. This is show friends. Uh, my grandfather was an actor. Um, I remember when I learned that fact, it was uh, during one of the rare weekends uh, during my childhood that I got to spend with my dad. The TV was on, and it was an old episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. And my dad looked up from the dinner he'd made us and said, is that my father? <laughs> and it was. Not Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, the episode was called The Day of the Bullet, season five, episode 20. My grandfather appeared on three Hitchcocks and a Twilight Zone and a Rawhide and a couple of other dozen TV shows and movies, always in small character roles, always there uh, for a minute and gone the next. And the main thing I remember about this incident was the look of recognition and uh, resignation on my father's face. He'd had even less time with his dad than I'd had with him or with either of them, actually. Uh, my family is defined by divorces and steps and halves and second draft families. <laughs> Distance is the rule, not the exception. When I went to college at NYU, I was determined to reverse this tradition. I'd gotten to spend a couple of amazing weekends in the city with my grandfather over the previous year. And I was looking forward to more stories about his life in the theater, uh, his own distant father. Irish, about his love of language, about anything really, uh, and he was excited too. He told me to call as soon as I'd gotten settled in, and I said I would. And then I didn't. Um, I don't know why, I just didn't. I just avoided it. Um, some of this was just the stuff of youth. Um, I don't know if you remember what it was like to be a college freshman? I barely do. <laughs> uh, but some of it was something else. My dad calls it the family curse, some dread of closing the distances between us that sort of presents as a telephone phobia. Uh, whatever it was, I, I dropped out of school before I finished my freshman year and planned to move to Seattle. Uh, when I called the tell my grandfather this and to apologize for not having been in touch, uh, his, his wife wouldn't put him on the phone and she just sort of chewed me out and said I'd broken his heart and that was 1991. And four years later I got the word that he was dying and didn't have much time left. And I used a whole paycheck to buy the plane and train tickets that would get me from here to there. I brought a stack of CDs with me and a borrowed disc man. Some of you will be old enough to remember CDs. <laughs> uh, I, I spent the weekend wandering around his home in Salt Point, New York, which is nestled between the Hudson River and the Taconic State Parkway, about 10 miles northeast of Poughkeepsie in Pleasant Valley. Um, I'd never been there before and would never be there again, but I was struck by the abundance of heirlooms and photographs uh, packed into a relatively small space, which they fancifully called a ranch house, <laughs> um, where he'd lived a long, happy life with his second draft family. Uh, they all seemed torn between a desire to treat me like a member of the family and the anxious, terrible knowledge of what my presence indicated for their family. You'll have to come see him again, they said, multiple times. And we all knew that we'd never have that kind of time. Uh, they also knew that by design or circumstance, their long, happy life together had been predicated on the exclusion of my father, and later, by extension, me, from participating in it. As a consequence, neither my father nor I ever learned how to be close to each other, though we do love each other dearly. Um, they were outwardly warm, but they guarded my access to my grandfather jealously and only letting me see him alone for a few minutes when he finally demanded it. 
And finally, alone, we said everything we needed to say about all the things we'd never had the chance to say to each other. I can still feel the strength of his grip in my palm. Next morning, I left that house full of memories and family that might have been mine and flew to Seattle to see the family I had chosen. My bandmates and I all lived and practiced together in a house in Ravenna, sort of like the monkeys only, without the help of the wrecking crew to make it sound good. <laughs> uh, we had met each other at the University of Washington student newspaper uh, in the communications building, the same place I would later meet an energetic young KCMU volunteer who uh, had worked his way into the coveted morning on-air slot that he still holds to this day, only with a stronger signal and better call letters. Uh, I arrived home to find that my bandmates had been working on a new song right there in the living room and were eager to show it to me. As it happened, I had scarcely stopped writing impressions of my trip, some of them in rhyme, since the moment I had boarded the train from Poughkeepsie. Uh, before the night was over, we had a new song, which we later recorded and put on our first album, which I heard quite a bit of on the KCMU morning show and a handful of other radio stations, lesser radio stations as well. And a couple of weeks after the song was written, I got the word that my grandfather had died. Uh, two weeks from tonight, it will have been 20 years to the day. Um, but I had my own family now. Uh, and speaking of the families you choose, I would uh, like to ask my incredible wife, Shenandoah Davis, to come up here and play the piano so I don't disgrace myself doing it. And uh, also speaking of family, uh, one of my bandmates and co-authors is uh, in the hospital right now and has been for the last three months uh, he has made lots of progress, and then he has uh, fallen back a bit, uh, and that has been the process. It has been fairly agonizing uh, to watch. Um, and I can really only send this song out to uh, Aaron Huffman.
He won.